there's been a few important AI announcements that we're going to cover here in rapid fire fashion. Number one, remember DeepSeek? They've been kind of quiet, but we're finally hearing what they've been cooking up this whole time. It seems like they're going to be releasing an AI agent this year that's going to compete with OpenAI. In other news, News Research releases Husky Hold'em Bench. It's a benchmark where scripted bots play Texas Hold'em poker. But here's the twist. Those bots are written by large language models. Kind of a plot twist. I'll show you why in a second. Also, Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff is saying that there's going to be 4,000 layoffs because he needs less heads with AI. According to the information.com, his words triggered a little bit of an AI crisis narrative. But fear not, OpenAI has a solution. Expanding economic opportunity with AI from OpenAI. Also, there's this... We'll get to that in just a second. So you might have been hearing a lot of news about DeepSeek. It's been laying in a wait for a little bit. So rumors were that DeepSeek delayed one of its models because of some difficulty training it on Huawei chips. According to the Financial Times, DeepSeek next AI model delayed by attempting to use Chinese chips. This was from August the 14th. Seems like they switched over to NVIDIA's, keeping the Huawei chips in reserve for inference and maybe some future projects. But seems like the Chinese chips aren't quite there yet, not quite competitive with NVIDIA, and this delayed the project. According to Bloomberg, DeepSeek is building an AI model designed to carry out multi-step actions on a person's behalf with a minimal direction. The system is also meant to learn and improve based on its prior actions. So this is a little bit vague. Could learning from past actions mean memory? Maybe this is kind of like the layman's way of referring to reinforcement learning. Or is it something much more advanced? We don't yet know. The, the first part is pretty clear. There's going to be a new AI model, less like a chatbot and more like an AI agent, capable of carrying out multi-step functions, long horizon tasks, to be more competitive with open AI and the Western Frontier AI Labs. Expect to see that in 2025, this year. Meanwhile, in other news, not that long ago, some of our smartest researchers like Noam Brown, currently at OpenAI, were building AIs that beat humans at poker. Here's Noam's profile. So he created, co-created Pluribus, which defeated top human poker professionals in human versus machine competition. So people would create AI that would beat humans at poker. The article he links is from 2019, just to give you kind of a timeline. And now, what, five, six years later, it's kind of flipped on its head. Now we have a benchmark that measures how well AI models, large language models, can build poker playing bots. It's by Noose Research, who've recently released Hermes 4. And it's called Husky Hold'em Bench. LLMs develop poker bots and compete. It's a benchmark that moves beyond code generation to test strategic thinking and creative problem solving through competitive poker bot development. Bots from each model compete in six-handed tables against all possible opponent combinations, starting with $10,000 per table and playing 1,000 hands. Rankings are determined by cumulative winnings. Currently, the Claude's are sitting at the top. Claude Sonnet 4 is at 3,600 Delta money, so it made... $3,672, right? So if it started with 10,000 and increased its holdings by 3,672, so what was that 36% increase on what it started with? Then we have Claude Opus 4.1 at 3,100, Gemini 2.5 Pro at just under 3,100, Grok 4 at 937, GPT 5 High at 396, Gemini 2.5 Flash at 111. Hermes for $405 billion. so that's news researchers, that's that's their model, their recent model, at negative 1,200. And the rest of the models, including some of the famous open source models, are in the negative. I am not surprised to see various Claude models somewhere near the top or at the top. I'm surprised how poorly Grok and GPT-5 High did here. I think this is going to warrant its very own video because I would love to break down and see why such a such a big difference between those two models. And even Grok 4 does pretty well on other challenges, although Grok 4 was never a coding model. But I got to say, the benchmarks we're seeing are getting more and more interesting because we're no longer just seeing how well these models answer various test questions. More and more, we're forcing them to compete against one another, not just in answering a question, but lo like long-term tasks that require strategic thinking. This is also involving coding and writing up bots that play poker. This is just a, a brilliant benchmark. And once again, 
yet another phenomenal benchmark to add to the new and exciting novel benchmarks that we can have because these large language models are getting so, so good. Words escape me. Mark Benioff, the Salesforce CEO, inadvertently stokes AI crisis a narrative according to the information. Now, he's been beating that drum for quite a while. It's important to understand that kind of critics of his stance are saying, well, he's trying to sell everybody on this idea of AI agents. So he might be kind of talking his own book. So maybe take it with a grain of salt. But here's yet another person saying that potentially we're going to be seeing less and less jobs as AI takes over. Again, not everyone's seeing eye to eye on it, but OpenAI might have a solution. So here's their recent blog post, Expanding Economic Opportunity with AI, Fiji Simo, CEO of Applications, one of the recent hires. And they start off with one of the first questions they get is, what's AI going to mean for my job? How it's going to impact my company? And the answer is AI will be disruptive. Jobs will look different. Companies will have to adapt. And all of us, from shift workers to CEOs, will have to learn to work in new ways. So the goal at OpenAI, they're saying we can't eliminate the disruption, but they can help more people be more fluent in AI. So I'll kind of skip to the chase here. They're saying that, you know, if you're a business looking to hire AI savvy people, finding the right person might be hit or miss. The OpenAI jobs platform. So that's one. And number two is OpenAI certification. Basically, as far as I can tell, this is maybe part online certification for AI jobs. Earlier this year, they launched OpenAI Academy, a free online learning platform. So the idea is to upskill employees and then help employers hire those upskilled employees that are now AI savvy. So Obviously, a lot of this is really going to be dependent on the execution, how well they execute. This could be a great thing or something that maybe doesn't have much of an impact. But let me know what you think about this. So OpenAI is providing some of the most used AI models. They're going to be providing, it sounds like, free certifications for people to upskill and learn AI. So OpenAI Academy, it's a free learning platform to learn AI. Who's teaching you how to use AI? Well, it's AI. So we obviously use AI to teach AI. Anybody will be able to prepare for the certification in ChatGPT's study mode and become certified without leaving the app. So they're teaching people to use AI. And it sounds like on top of this, there's going to be some sort of an OpenAI jobs platform that's going to help connect businesses that want to hire these certified AI savvy employees. But let me know what you think about this. Do you think OpenAI should be in charge of this? Will anyone do a great job of upskilling people as some of the jobs are replaced so that they're able to find new jobs using AI? Let me know. I'm very curious to know how this is going to work out. Obviously, the, the make it or break it is going to be in the execution. I'm, I'm curious to know what people think about this thing. In other news, Ilya Sutskover made a tweet. He does not tweet a lot, but when he does, it's about this Ilya merch and apparently this is the Ilya merch you can buy one today shipped globally shipped worldwide to show your support for Ilya Sutskever what did Ilya see he saw this if you're wondering where you can buy this I would take a look at the bottom right of the image that little symbol there <laughs> means that this was very likely generated by Google's Nano Banana somebody took a picture of a hat a picture of Ilya's head put it into Nano Banana and said combined but Ilya loves it, saying a revolutionary breakthrough if I've ever seen one. My question is, can you imagine if he starts tweeting? Can you imagine if he starts trolling people on X? We live in one of the most entertaining timelines possible, at least until one of them builds a super intelligence, at which point, well, no one knows. If you made this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.